Good day here at Brookings Radio. We welcome Brookings School Superintendent Summer Schultz. Dr. Schultz, good to see you once again. Good to see you. How you been? I have been doing well. We missed a month because of me. I was <laughs> out with illness, so it's good to see you again. Good to see you. Let's talk about some stuff then that have happened over the last couple months. And one of those, the calendar was set for 24-25, and it's a little different because of construction. And I'm sure people that have kids in school might know about this, but let's cover it anyway. Yeah, exactly. We are having that later start date after Labor Day uh, for the 24-25 school year, simply to have all schools start at the same time for that consistency piece for families who have shared transportation, um, child care, all of the things that make keeping families together easier. It's a one-year Thing where just for, you know, again, that 24, 25 school year will start early. For those of us who may have grown up in Minnesota like me, we always started after Labor Day. Right. As a former <laughs> superintendent over there, I did as well. So I think they even put that into law, didn't they? They do. They do. Yeah. There's some exceptions if you can get it passed, but it is mm-hmm. law. But so that, uh, does that change graduation a little later than normal or? Um, you know, I haven't gone I think it was, back and I think looked it was at May all 25th, the history. But yeah. And ours. It, didn't seem that uh, much later. No. In Brookings, it looks like that. It typically is a little bit later. And so I don't think people will see a big change with that. It will be more if Mother Nature, you know, cooperates <laughs> with us and we are able to get kids out uh, by Memorial Day like we would always like. We know that in especially South Dakota summers. Kids are ready to roll, and so we just we need Mother Nature to cooperate again, um, like it has for the most part of this current winter. So, yeah. Speaking of Mother Nature cooperating with construction, it's really been been a great winter for that. It has been good. We have lost very few days for weather changes, and and really, I mean, other than the mud pit that we're seeing in all of our all of our facilities and grounds, it seems like um, it has cooperated and and kept those guys working hard. It's unusual not to see some snow cover this time of year, but the wall, the schools, the new schools, Hillcrest and Madaria are enclosed, and the roofs are on and working inside mostly. I think absolutely, we've been able to get inside and take our you know, some tours and. And really look at the learning spaces as they're coming to life. And, and it's incredible to know that we'll have kids in there within the year. So uh, that's That's got to be exciting. It is. And the kids are excited. They have been able to take a peek and do some mini tours. And we want to get more community members in, especially those who helped with the bond, with the original bond, show them Um, what their hard work went towards. And as we create the learning opportunities specific to those educational specifications that come from our goals, come from what we want to do with kids, it's exciting to see them come to life in those new spaces. And even when those schools are complete, the project won't be complete. Exactly. Because then you have demolition. Right. The demolition will start right away this summer. And that's why we have to get out of school, you know, on a, on a good uh, we, again, need Mother Nature to cooperate with us. We get those hours in and get kids out so that we give them the time they need to get that work done this this summer. Because obviously demolition would be much better with no kids. Yeah, you, it turns out that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. You know, and this is all connected because now we go right into early childhood and the yeah. possibility of some of that at the new schools. And where are we at there? I tell you, this community has done a tremendous amount of work exploring and researching, really investigating that early learning and early care piece. And so as the district has new buildings with those wings that are dedicated to early learning, we wanted to make sure that we were a community partner and that if we just looked at preschool, the unintended consequence would be that the zero, you know, the birth to three population that we already know were strained for care, not quality care, but just capacity in mm-hmm. care could in turn be compromised. And so we have worked really hard with the economic development company or corporation, along with the Boys and Girls Club to form a collaborative and such that both the early care of of children ages zero to three along with preschool options are combined and some pretty exciting things will start coming out where we are working with the boys and girls club in those that to increase the capacity especially in the zero to three 
and us being partners with the preschool piece and continuous care in the school district. Um, and so we're just close to finalizing what phase one of that plan would look like, which would again help us with the preschool additions at the school without compromising the birth to three in the community. And that's really a testament to the people in this community, the Boys and Girls Club, their board, the school district board, working together to make sure that we keep that whole piece in mind and the work that the community has done in the early care uh, capacity issues for the last couple of years. Do we know yet, I mean, how the wings that the schools will be used? I would imagine it would be open to the whole district then for for. We don't have or do that know piece. that yet? No. no. Phase one of a collaborative really does some shifting of preschool from the club to the school district and making sure that if the club were to make changes to their facility to allow for the birth to three, that all those families who are currently receiving early childhood education get those first options at the school district. And so sure. that's phase one, and that's what is coming into play this week. From there, we'll determine how we increase more options for early learning potentially at the school district, knowing that we needed to get that first start in and do it. We're doing it in a way with, again, the economic development folks so that it is open to the potential of business sponsorships and that sort in phase two. A lot to plan here, a lot, yes. lot of moving parts. It's nice to see the cooperation that's going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. That's one thing that attracted me to this district is when you look and you see the good and you see the folks who sit on these boards voluntarily or you see the, the individuals trying to bolster our community and bolster that that pride. That's the type of community I wanted to go to, and that's exactly what I'm seeing. Everything I thought this community had, I'm seeing. And um, our work with the Boys and Girls Club and the Economic Development Corporation, it has been, it's been tremendous for the opportunities we've been able to pull together. And it's cool that the BEDC is involved because they recognize this is a workforce issue and Absolutely. is important. Yeah. Senator Reed really, you know, out in Pierre is one that continues to keep this on top of people's radar, but it's South Dakota and it's, all, and it's a hard sell. And so I do believe this collaborative will open some of those doors to keep the conversation moving. And it does seem to be turning a little bit, even I at agree. the state level. Yeah. I agree. That economic development Peace is huge. We yep. need we need quality care for children in order to bring in the quality workforce. Speaking of the legislature, we do have a few minutes left. Maybe the big one is HB 1048, which deals with teacher pay and compensation going mm -hmm. to teachers. Governor Nelm has been pushing this one and the Department of Education. Yesterday it was totally revamped. Yeah. Again, because the original Amendment E, I yes, believe. Yes, I think it's Amendment E, because the original bill just well, it went too far. Now it looks like they have a good place for, for comparisons, which would be the previous year, and a minimum salary statewide at $45,000. Seems like this one might be acceptable to, to most groups. What are your thoughts on if that's the way it turns out? Yeah. Well, Brookings, I have said from the time I came. We're okay, right? Yes. I, I Our school board and, and, and leadership team has done a, a very good job of, of keeping our, our staff at a level that is competitive, and, and so that helps. When we look just statewide, um, it's, it's a tough one when you start looking at minimum salaries because, you know, I'm not looking at other people's budgets, making decisions for them, mm -hmm. and so it's hard to know why they landed where they landed. But I believe there's only, I believe there's under 50 schools that currently are under that 45000 for a minimum salary. And so it's going to affect a much smaller number of schools. Now, whether it does what, what our governor is hoping for, I'm not sure. Um, I do know in Brookings, we just have to continue to remain competitive on those teaching salaries and our, our full staff salaries. And that does make some of these minimums do make it a little more difficult understanding that there's a lot of work and a lot of staff that make up school districts and support kids and families in our community. And so making sure we don't forget about our ability to do things with them also. And so I think anytime we're just talking about keeping pay competitive in our state, it's important. I, I know yesterday, just listening to some of the testimony on the accountability piece, there were a couple of times where I went, 
what? Right. <laughs> it was very confusing. Yeah. You know, sometimes, and, and bless their heart, our legislative body, sometimes they don't always, you know, they're, they're government of the people. And sometimes, <laughs> you know, we understand our world. I understand schools. Others maybe understand hospitals or, or long-term care. But those individuals don't. And sometimes the comments, you go, holy smokes, that just couldn't work. But yeah. um, but. We sure appreciate them for trying. Maybe have educators involved in education. But it's it's a thought. Just, yeah. <laughs> crazy, right? There's another bill that's, that would change election dates of, of, of yeah, for schools, too. And hold, I don't know if I really understand why that wouldn't be left local. You know, I think what they're trying to say is they want to They don't get, like the turnout. Yes. They want to get more people at the polls. So if you do it on more established dates, it could um, help improve that. Um, but then again, Brookings has had an April City in school election for right. as long as I've lived here, which is yes. now 30 years. And, and, and I'm sure it goes further com- back. Agree. And in communities where education and putting people on boards and commissions and things where, um, again, in a community that is so supportive, we don't see that um, a- that this bill is coming from somewhere. And so I imagine there are places where they feel like a broader um, voter population would be better. Um, so this is one that I'm, I'm not too, I'm not paying as close of attention right. to. Uh, I don't think it will affect Brookings, but local we'll control is always pretty helpful. And primary turnout's not that great anyway. No, no. So I'm not sure not what. South Dakota. Yeah. Oh well, it's smarter than me. So yeah. You know, let them figure it out, right? Yep. Hey, we're out of time, but thank you very much. I thank you so much, Dr. Summer Schultz, Brookings Radio.